Hi, my name is Kate Lundblad. I'm 13 years old. I'm Noah Schnapp. I'm 10 years old. My name is Emily Brown. I'm 11 years old. I'm Finn Wolfhard. I'm 6. My name is Kate Matarazzo, and I'm 12 years old. The journey to casting Stranger Things was a long one, but thousands of auditions later, the Duffer brothers were able to land on the iconic cast we know today. However, that doesn't mean that the cast landed the part they originally wanted. In fact, a lot of actors, including the OG Stranger Things cast, were at first rejected. Ready to find out why? We'll have to see. <laughs> Skylar Gertner's experience auditioning for Stranger Things is the definition of everything happens for a reason. The young actor says he auditioned for not one, but two characters in Stranger Things. He never mentioned what parts they were, but we're going to take a wild guess and say Will and Mike. But Skylar never heard back from the casting director and moved on. The Stranger Things rejection was a blessing in disguise because without it, he wouldn't have auditioned and landed his huge role in another hit show, Ozark. Chaos never stops. <laughs> the Stranger Things auditions even reached as far as Broadway, where stage star Eli Tokash took a shot at getting a place in the Upside Down. He spoke about his audition with Stranger Things season three actor Gabriella Pozzolo on his podcast saying, although he did send in a tape, he never got a call back. This just goes to show just how selective the Duffer brothers were with the casting of the series. Hi, I'm Noah Schnapp and I play Will Byers. At this point, imagining anyone else but Finn Wolfhard playing Mike is impossible. But at one point, the Duffer Brothers did have to do this, with Noah Schnapp. Yup. Noah originally auditioned for Mike instead of Will, when he sent in his audition tape. He was obviously rejected for the part of Mike, but got a call while at camp from the production team, letting him know they wanted to cast him as Will. I actually auditioned for Mike first, then they called me back for Will. We're not sure Noah even realized he was offered a different part at that point. According to the actor, he had auditioned for so many jobs, he couldn't place what role he had just landed. And I was like, oh my god, wait, so this is like, this is my first TV show. Joe Keery was looking to play a more relaxed character than the one he ended up portraying. When he first sent in an audition tape, it was for Jonathan Byers, basically the complete opposite of Steve Harrington. After not getting a callback, he assumed he just didn't get the role. He was right, but they still called and asked if he would consider sending in a tape for Steve instead. And I said, yeah. Although Joe remembers thinking how much of a total jerk Steve was, he sent in the tape and the rest is history. At least in the end, Joe did get to experience Steve's character development and got the best of both worlds by playing jerk Steve and nice Steve. They don't tell you about that when they cast you. Being an established actor, the Duffer brothers were a little taken back when they received an audition tape from Sean Astin. Usually, actors like Sean are offered the part, or an audition, instead of just sending in a tape. But Sean was just such a huge fan of the show that he wanted to be a part of it in any way he could. Casting older and more experienced actors, it's a big responsibility. The tape he sent in was originally for a journalist named Murray Bowman, who would only be featured in four season two episodes. However, the Duffer brothers thought his fame would be a little too distracting for the role and had to reject him, but that wasn't without them calling Sean and offering him the part of Bob Newby instead. Bob Newby, superhero. In a way, even the Duffer brothers had to audition and face rejection before they were given an opportunity to shine. They went through almost 20 networks until Netflix finally lit the match on their projects. Apparently, others were having a hard time grasping whether Stranger Things was for adults or children. Isn't that the beauty of it? It's not meant for one group and not the other. I mean, it's kind of a myth, it's meant for everybody. Once they were cast themselves, they went on to audition 907 boys and 307 girls for the roles of the Hawkins gang. The entire audition process consisted of the actors reading lines from the Stranger Things season one script and lines from the movie Stand By Me, which was a major inspiration for the brothers. But not every audition was that straightforward. Earlier, we spoke about some of the actors who were rejected from a role on the show, but there are some members of the Stranger Things cast who got the part in the end, but had to go as far as lying to be cast and were very nearly rejected in the process. It's very kind of unique directing this young cast. I love it. Believe it or not, the Duffer brothers didn't automatically think of Winona Ryder as their first choice for Joyce. 
They were really vying on casting huge adult stars to draw in a variety of audience members, and were looking at both Naomi Watts and Marissa Tomei instead. However, in the end, Winona's electric energy won out. The Duffer brothers admitted that they considered her an option after realizing how much they missed seeing her on the big screen. As you probably suspected, Winona didn't have a traditional audition. Instead, they invited her to have tea and a chat with the production unit. We sat for hours having tea with Winona, and we came away from those interactions with certainty that we've found our Hopper and our Joyce. Apparently, sitting across from Winona gave off the vibe and atmosphere they were looking for in their perfect Joyce. If you can't handle this, then just turn around and drop me off first. David Harbour wasn't anywhere on the Duffer Brothers' radar in the early stages of casting for Stranger Things. In fact, there were two actors ahead of him on the list that the brothers had their eye out for, just like Winona. Because Stranger Things was originally meant to be a limited series, the casting department wanted to try to utilize the star power of either Ewan McGregor or Sam Rockwell to draw in adult audiences. But casting director Carmen Cuba wasn't having that. She pushed and pushed for David. And when it was decided that Netflix wouldn't be a limited series and the Duffer Brothers saw his audition tape, they knew that he would be the perfect fit for the scruffy, fun-loving sheriff they had created. Carmen, I'll give her full credit because she just kept going, I think, David Harbour. Ewan McGregor had nothing on David Harbour by the end of it. Yes, I think it worked! Sadie started off as just another fan of the show before she landed her audition for Stranger Things. But the young actress went to long lengths that almost had a catastrophic end just to land the role of Max. After binge-watching season one of the series and becoming obsessed, she asked her agent to get her an audition, and a week later, she was standing in the audition room in front of the casting directors. However, before the interview, she had told them that she was an avid rollerblader, which turned bad fast. I was doing some scenes, and all of a sudden, I look into the corner of the room and see a pair of rollerblades. I'm like, holy crap, they're going to make me rollerblade. I kept thinking, oh no, oh no. Luckily, they didn't make her rollerblade, and she landed the role. But she did have to face the consequences of actually learning how to rollerblade before filming started. It turned out great. They needed a certain type of personality to be able to portray Billy. With all of his emotionally charged scenes and snarky attitude, Stranger Things couldn't cast just anyone. That's why it isn't exactly a surprise how different Dacre Montgomery's audition tape was. While it starts out fairly normal, with him reading lines and giving it his all, he ends the audition by dancing shirtless with a pair of sunglasses to the song Come On Eileen, an 80s staple. While in hindsight, it may seem a little odd, it's very on par for Billy's character, and it landed him the role. It just goes to show what kind of effort needed to be put into these auditions in order to actually land a role on the hit Netflix series. It kind of went all out, um, but I believe in taking risks. Getting rejected isn't fun, but if the experience of these actors can teach us anything, it's that sometimes getting rejected leads us to something even greater. Without Joe Keery getting rejected, we wouldn't have the sassy Steve Harrington we all love so much. What audition story is your favorite? Thanks for watching.